Hi, I'm Kit Rich. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing something a little different than I normally do. Oftentimes you've seen I have fitness videos, stretching videos, all so important for uh, health for the mind, body, soul. But today I'm going to be talking about a tool that I personally use called SoRite, P-S-O-R-I-T-E. And this is a tool that I use for myofascial release to release my psoas, which in turn helps to release my lower back, my hips, and the front of my thighs. Now, let me just, a little disclaimer here. I am not someone that promotes um, a product that I haven't created myself or that I actually use. I actually have a huge hesitation in doing that. I get a lot of offers and I often turn them down because it's not authentic. I don't use the product, so I can't really talk about it. This is actually a little bit of a reverse. I've been using this product for you for a long time. I wanna say for over a year. And I actually reached out to the owner to say, I use your product, I would love to promote it because I really believe in it. And there's a link below with a discount code if you are interested in purchasing. So the so right. Let me first talk quickly about what the psoas is because a lot of people don't even know what the psoas is and how it contributes to pain. I won't go too much into it. I don't want to get too scientific on you, but just know that the psoas is a very long, deep muscle and it connects to the hip complex, to the lower spine and to the front of the thigh. And it's responsible for leg movement, hip movement, hip flexion, a lot of it. And on, from a, a different point of view, it's often called the muscle of the soul. And the reason is, is it, when it gets really tight, it can store a lot of tension. And in turn, when it gets released, a lot of people feel a huge emotional release. It's so connected to, it's right there where the organs are, there's a lot going on. So, um, so let me just say this too, just to be very, very clear, oftentimes, when the psoas, so I'll just kind of point, give you this sort of general area, the psoas, when it gets really tight, it can cause lower lumbar back pain. So right around this area, okay, lower, lower back pain. It can also cause a lot of tension in the hip. It can also cause tension in the front of the thigh. And oftentimes people are thinking that they just need to release that area, stretch that area, and they're not taking into consideration that the psoas might be the culprit. And here's what's interesting too, is the psoas, there's two sides to it, right? It's two parts. Sometimes one side is just tight and the other one's not. Sometimes it's both. So it's really eye-opening when you learn about your psoas. And psoas is spelled P S. O A S. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate with you in real time, uh, just some things I do on a daily basis. I can do it first thing in the morning, in the afternoon, at night. And it's great to do actually before you stretch, because what you're doing is you're increasing blood flow into the area. And so then after you've done this and you stretch, it increases your flexibility even more. So I'm going to turn this so as, so it's in alignment with my body. And I'm just going to sort of point to you real quick where I'm going to start. Cause I know I'm wearing dark colors. Um, so right around here, think about just below my belly button or in alignment with my belly button where my hips are. That's where I'm going to place this. So right. All right. I'm going to start my timer. This is one of those things you really want to feel it out. Uh, you want to start out with less is more. You can start 15 seconds, 30 seconds, work your way up to 45 seconds to a minute. Okay. You don't want to go for too long. Sometimes more is just too much, right? So I'm going to set my timer here. All right. And now I'm going to gently, very gently come down into that area that I just pointed. Now notice that I've already come down onto my elbows. This can be a little too much tension for people. Oftentimes it's a good idea to start on your hands. And then once you feel the area release, you can come down onto your elbows. And once you feel it release even more, if it feels okay for you, you can come all the way down onto your forehead. Just know that coming down onto your forehead, you're going to feel a lot more tension. So in this position, some of you will feel tension right away. Oh. 
After that 45 seconds, you come on off. I, mean, I don't normally talk through it. <laughs> so you want to feel tension about, you don't want to feel tension of 10. That's a little too much for your body, right? You want to ease off if that's the case. I would say you want to be right in the middle around a five is what you should feel, okay? So I'm going to come back down to it. I'm going to do it again. I gave myself about a 15 second break, sometimes more depending on how you feel. And I'm going to come back down. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to, what I like to call, wiggle it. <laughs> so once I'm in that position, I just start to wiggle side to side. Now for me personally, my right side is the only part that feels tension. But I don't want to ignore my left side either, right? So I'm still honoring both sides, but I might just give just a little bit more attention to my right. So I stay in it a little bit longer, wiggle in the right. I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot. I'm feeling it, it hurts. I'm, <laughs> I'm just used to this feeling. I've actually come to enjoy this feeling of knowing that this tension that I'm putting onto the psoas is actually tension that will help release tension, right? About, about two more seconds here, and then I'm gonna come on off. Okay, so from after, after I do that, I'm gonna work my way up just a little bit. I'm gonna go just a little bit higher, more into the abdominal area, and you're gonna notice maybe the tension's not as much there. Maybe it does sit a little bit lower. And for me, it's right there on the right side. All right, timer has started and I'm just gonna go right into the wiggle. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Think happy thoughts. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't laugh when doing this. <laughs> Actually, no, that might, <laughs> might not be a bad idea. It takes a, <laughs> puts tension on and then releases, it's a contraction. Again, you can come down all the way and do that and just keep breathing. About 10 more seconds. So I'm giving myself personally 45 seconds each round. Again, you can go for less amount of time on or where you are. All right. So now what I'm going to do is knowing that my right side just needs a little bit more, I am going to bring it over to my right and I'm gonna isolate on one side, but I'm gonna play with it a little bit and go at an angle. Okay, I might actually go more at it like this. I can play with it. So I have about a 45 degree angle here, all right? So I'm gonna come down just onto my right, so you can decide right, left, start the timer. I'm gonna put this down just a little bit. No, that's not right. Yeah was trying to avoid the pain, <laughs> so I thought if I adjusted it, there's no way of enjoy avoiding this pain. It's intense. All right, I can only handle about 20 seconds, so now I'm gonna turn it the other way, so see that's the other degree, and back on. And that's even more painful. That's just insane. So something to know about me, I had, um, I was a soccer player, in middle school, high school, I um, tore my anterior cruciate ligament and my meniscus when I was 13 years old. And at the time, okay, I'm gonna come on up. At the time, uh, it wasn't explained to me that when, I'm, when you're that age, your ligaments and your muscles and your joints are still kind of growing and figuring them, themselves out. And my hips, at that time were just starting to widen. They were wider than my knees, as it is for a lot of young girls and women. And because of that, there's an unequal distribution of weight, right? I didn't, I didn't go straight down. So I didn't know that certain parts of my body were, um, that, I, that I, I'm sorry, that I needed to focus on certain parts of my body, strengthening my glutes, releasing my psoas, really stretching, focusing on balancing exercises, to keep me from getting injured. Unfortunately, I didn't know that and I got really, really injured. So uh, because of the surgery that I had, which helped save my knee, but in turn, it tightened up my whole right side. So my hip, my glute, my inner thigh, my quad, all of it is just so, so tight. Now, to be honest, I don't know if it was, all of that was really tight and that's why I got injured. I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg, but it doesn't really matter. 
At this point, what matters is, is that I honor that I do have a sensitive knee and that I really try to relax all the areas around it while strengthening my glutes to support my knee. All right, so I'm just gonna show you a few more things that I do, like to, to go off of what I just said. So my inner thigh tends to get really tight and I can actually, what's so great about this tool is that I use it to help release what's called my adductor. And the adductor, just think of the inner thigh. And what you can do is you can find the spot where it feels really tight. And I always time this because it's just not fun. <laughs> and you just gently put pressure on it. So notice I'm up here, but if it's okay for you, you can come down and you just kind of move like you're massaging the area that feels really, really tight. And I'm just gonna show you on my right side. That's just painful, friends. Notice I'm lifting the leg up and I'm moving it around. And so again, this is one of those things that you're putting a little bit of tension to release. All right, you, I have about 10 more seconds here. You know, I'm just realizing this is very vulnerable for me to be doing this. Because <laughs> this is just, this is painful. Okay, now I'm gonna show you how I release my glutes with this. Okay, so think of sort of the top part of the glute below the lower back, right? The top part of the glute goes to the top part here. And you wanna be very, very careful and gentle as you come to sit on it. And you wanna make sure that you have nice energy in your hands here as I just rock my knees side to side. All right, so you're gonna feel, especially one side usually is tighter than the other. And I just rock side to side. All right, for, to identify just a little bit more. So my right side again is the thing that always takes the heat. So what I do here is I start by lifting my left leg to put a little bit of tension. and I rock side to side, and then I switch the leg, which feels way more intense, right? So right leg up, if it's the right glute, and I just wiggle it side to side. Slowly breathe. All right, lastly, I come on down I have way less tolerance for that still, less than my psoas, believe it or not. So the side of the hip here, I'm just going to come on up and I come onto that part and I gently come down onto my elbow. Now my top leg can be behind or in front, but again, I'm just gonna gently rock forward and back to help release the tension in the hip. And then relax. When you've done the psoas release with the so right, I really recommend stretching. So I'm just gonna give you a few examples of some stretches that I do afterwards. Many of you know what a hamstring stretch is, so I won't go into the hamstring stretch, but after you've opened up the psoas, you can come down onto your side, grab the leg, tailbone under, and then gently pull that leg back. So like I mentioned at the beginning, the psoas helps, um, it, here, it connects here at the hip complex and it can also tighten up the front of the thigh. So once you've loosened up the psoas, and created more blood flow with that myofascial release, opening up the quad and the front of the thigh is really, really important and should feel pretty good. You just wanna make sure that you're dropping your tailbone under so you're not really arching into the lower back. And then once you release that, you can come on up. If you need to put a pad underneath your knee, you can. You bring one leg forward and you lift up to help open up the front of the body here. So you're dropping into the hip, but as you're doing that, you also have this awareness that your inner thighs are squeezing in towards each other. So you're not just completely releasing and sinking into the hip. There's an upward squeeze energy to help create a little bit more tension to help release. And then breathe. 
and then come on out. You can do the other side. So I'll just do that for you real quick. You come on down, you grab the thigh, tailbone under as you pull the leg back. Feels so good. And then you release and you can come on up. Bringing the, up. Oh, sorry, wrong leg. <laughs> right leg forward. So my left leg is back and you push up and open. So also uh, something to share with you, I didn't actually discover this tool. I was using psoas balls, which work really well as well, but I didn't actually discover this tool until my husband, who suffers from a lot of back pain, uh, discovered this and started using it. And it helped cure his pain because he wasn't aware that the majority of his pain was stemming from a tight, tight, tight psoas, which is very, very common. So try this out if you'd like. There's the link below um, to get the discount and I hope you enjoy it. I hope it works for you. If not, I believe it will though. Have a great day.